You probably know someone that's always misplacing stuff. I do personally. Whether they can't find their keys in the morning, they leave their clothes everywhere like my sweaters, they don't even know where that stack of $100 bills is that they went to the casino. Okay, honestly, I've never done that. But anyways, could you imagine if your computer was that forgetful and never remembered where you put stuff like save games, important papers or tax documents, or your operating system? Fortunately, all computers use some kind of file system so it can keep track of where all your stuff is. Just like how you might use a closet space or cabinets at home to keep your collection of random clothes and kitchen items from being a complete mess. So how do they do that? Well, there are many different types of systems out there, but what they all have in common is that they divide up your hard drive, SSD, or flash drive into small units that store data and have some kind of way of remembering what data is in each unit so it can go and find it later on. To better understand how this works and to figure out what system to use for your own stuff, let's have a look at some common file systems, starting off with File Allocation Table, or FAT. And although its name is incredibly unflattering, FAT was used by the vast majority of home Windows-based PCs until XP came out. FAT worked by splitting the disk into a bunch of clusters, giving each cluster a unique ID number, then using a table to track what part of what was stored in each cluster. All right, pretty straightforward and simple, no big deal there, but as hard drives became larger, and larger. Fat ran into some problems. Namely, it resulted in a lot of wasted space because it often couldn't fill clusters completely, a problem called slack, and could only support drives that were kind of smaller due to the way that Fat stored information about file locations. Fat32, which came to prominence with Windows 98, was an improvement but still couldn't deal with partitions larger than two terabytes, which isn't that big these days. To overcome these limitations, every version of Windows since XP and NT 3.1 on the business side of things has used the only slightly less awkwardly named New Technology File System, or NTFS. NTFS uses some space management tricks to make it use space much more efficiently than FAT, resulting in better real-world capacity in many cases, and can support massive partitions of hundreds of terabytes, as well as huge individual file sizes, important in the age of 4K videos that can span multiple hours, making them massive. It also has features to help prevent data loss in the event of a crash, native file compression and security features, including native file encryption support to keep out unauthorized users. These features have made NTFS an almost universal choice for Windows-based PCs these days, but just like it's hard to get rid of those last 10 pounds of fat at the Dang. gym, fat the file system hasn't completely gone away. FAT32 is still commonly used on USB flash drives to maintain compatibility with older versions of Windows as well as operating systems such as Linux. And speaking of flash drives, there's a new version of FAT called XFAT, which is surprisingly not the name of a line of diet supplements. XFAT was designed specifically with high capacity flash drives and memory cards in mind and support much larger capacities and file sizes than older versions of FAT. While not including features of NTFS that flash drives don't really need in order to keep things running quickly. XFAT isn't always compatible with some quite a bit older versions versions of Windows though, so keep that in mind when choosing what you're going to use for your flash drive if you for some reason are still using like unpatched versions of XP. The good thing though is that it's pretty easy to switch file systems on your flash drive by just doing a quick reformat. After you've saved your file somewhere else, of course, I don't want to be responsible for that. But no matter what you choose, you can bet that your drives will keep track of your data better than your roommate who is always asking you where the TV remote is. Are you ready for a Linus style segue? I got this one, I got this one. Speaking of keeping track of things, keep track of your education with lynda.com. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. You can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn on your own schedule at your own pace. You can browse each course's transcript to follow along or to search for a specific keyword that you may have missed and skip to that point in the video, which is actually super helpful. You can take notes as you go along and refer to them later. You can download tutorials to watch them on the go. You can access it on iOS, Android, PC, basically whatever the crap you want. You can create playlists of courses that you want to watch to customize your learning path or even share with friends and colleagues and even team members. 
Your Lynda.com membership will give you access to all of that stuff at a flat rate just starting at $25 per month. So whether you're looking to become an industry expert, whether you're looking to become even more passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, feel free to check out Lynda.com slash TechWiki and sign up for your free 10-day trial now. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Let me know if there's other stuff in the comments down below you would like me to uh, make a video on. And don't forget to check out Channel Super Fun. I'm not going to reference a specific video because Dennis. Blame Dennis. Blame Dennis in the comments down below. Tag Dennis in the comments down below. Uh, just, just say his name randomly. I would even prefer if it made no sense at all because that's what Channel Super Fun's about. Anyways, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.